So from the offset, I want to give you an introduction to it. Uh, so with the introduction for presentation, now remember presentation and data response, it's twofold. So the one would be presentation. And then secondly, we have data response. Now with presentation, that is very easy. It's, it is the before, during, and then after, so which means before you do the presentation, during the presentation, what must you do as a presenter? And then lastly, it would be to consider uh, some sort of feedback and then how can you improve on it? With data response, there we're just going to look at multimedia uh, design of the multimedia. And then we're also going to look at um, your verbal versus your nonverbal uh, visual aids and and I'm very excited about just to show you a couple of things there. But as it, as I've said, for every good grade 12 learner, it's always advisable to prepare to prepare this in the form of an essay. So listen here, um, um, I am going to be bold enough in saying that. Uh, I told you already forms of ownership. No, no, I don't think that they're going to ask you that as an essay. This one they might mix it with uh, investment securities or investment insurance presentations. So that's why just to be to be fully equipped, to be ready with it. Look here, let's look at it. There you have your introduction. I'm giving it to you so that when you get your essay, then you can write something like this. In terms of effective communication, it is imperative. It's important for the success of the business. Uh, like what I'm doing here now, I'm saying that if you have the info, that is the lifeline. Eh? Uh, remember, knowledge is power. Likewise, also in a business, I'm even giving you something from the print media or uh, the originality. Uh, now, you know what? I, I've got I've got an assistant here with me. Uh, we've got two phones here. We want to I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And I wanted to send you uh, free airtime, but then I was reminded, and this is a practical example, something originality, the Poppy Act. And then I was a bit sad, I'm not allowed to do it grade 12. I wanted to send you free uh, data from, I've got, it, I've got it here now, I would most probably need to give it away because I can't uh, send it to you if you give me the right answer on the uh, with with your phone num cell phone numbers, I'm not allowed to do it. Can you see there is current media practical example, the Poppy Act? Make a note of that. Poppy Act would not allow me to share info to you unless I get consent from you. Then there's also something from the from the conclusion as well. So that is what you would basically need to take into consideration there. Right. So. I've got, a, I've got an acronym for you that I'm going to just test you right at the end of it. When you do the presentation, remember before, during, and then right at the end when you do, you want to improve your presentation. Remember the acronym is T, and I know that Melissa is writing it also there for you down. And I will show you also the T, it's T V F. So it's T V F channel, T V, T V F channel. It's telling your vision. That is when you do your presentation. You tell what you see, what you want others to hear. That is TV. Let's check it out quickly. Here we go. So in, in your presentation, great ones, before. There you have it. Your first acronym for today is the TVF, and you're going to see. This is how smart we work, eh? When you any when you need to write facts on the how what must the present the the presenter do before he's going to do the presentation. One of the things that you can definitely write on is time frame. I think you would agree with me as a presenter. What is the time that you give to me? Like today, you're only giving me, say, 45, 30 minutes for me to do this presentation. Then I must ask you questions. And then obviously you want to go and enjoy your weekend. Like uh, tonight, you're going to make the circle bigger, right? Oh, yeah. Thanks for that. So this is the time frame. You're going to see that um, even here with before, 
create effect of visual aids, you're always going to use visual aids. Um, what kind of visual aids am I going to use now when I do the presentation? Am I just going to use my PowerPoint? Am I just going to use any audio? Am I going to show your video? And then hopefully you're going to give me uh, uh, some feedback. Is that okay? Is that cool? Is that okay with you? Then as a presenter, you're obviously going to ask yourself, what is the purpose? What is the objectives? What, what are the main points that I would like to leave with my grade 12s today, right? Uh, and then uh, pre-knowledge of the audience. I know who you are. I can see what you guys are doing. I know you are tired, but we're just hanging in there, hey? And then um, I'm giving you this rough draft of this uh, presentation. So that is the presentation before, right? What did I say? What are the keywords there? It's the TVF, right? It's the TVF, right? So now again, let's see if we can do that also during the presentation. There we go, TVF. Now as I'm, I'm done, I've already worked out what I need to do before I'm going to present to you, right? Now I am during the presentation, I'm busy doing it now. So now I'm going to pace myself. I must manage my time effectively. Are you with me? Uh, again, I am going to ask myself these pictures that I've got on here in terms of the visual aids. Uh, is it appropriate? Is it OK? Then um, I must write it in. I must make sure that I'm going to allow enough time for feedback. Again, always remember it's about the person. So you're going to ask yourself now as a person, wow, what am I going to do now? Looking at myself, doing with my. I'm going to make eye contact with you guys. Um, I don't know if you want to see my assistant. She just passed grade 12 last year. So she's my assistant here also. Uh, I'm going to maintain, I'm going to be audible. I'm going, not going to go too fast or I'm not going to speak too loud and then I'm going to summarize. You, this is all during the presentation. So remember before and during is your T, V, F, right? After the presentation, now remember, again, you're going to ask me questions about, about this. Uh, I must obviously make sure that I, as a presenter, I understand your questions. I am going to, I'll definitely going to acknowledge your good questions. Um, and if I don't understand the question, I will ask you to rephrase. So remember, grade 12s, while you are still fresh there, I just want to say this to you. Under every uh, question, every question, every topic, you can get away with three or four facts. That's why I'm giving you the bare minimum here. Like remembering those T, time, V, visual aids, F, feedback. Try to remember those things so that you will be so that you will know that uh, this is what I'm going to do. Right. OK, so now let's quickly just move on because I th I'm sure you want to get to the exciting part of it, uh, of this presentation. Again, look at this here, areas of improvement. Again, you're going to con you look at your TVF, right? TVF. Can you just say it, write it down there for me, please? Again, you're going to reflect on the length, your time of the presentation. So you've sent me now the feedback. You said to me, Mr. Feltman, or oh, sir, uh, I think you were a bit boring. You took too long with this because this is easy for us. Why didn't you just focus more on the questions? So then time, you see, visual aids. So we don't like your pictures. You did not use enough of that. Uh, I'm going to analyze your feedback. So can you see there? And then I'm changing the objectives. I'm going to decide whether I'm going to update or upgrade and reflect uh, on any of your past uh, past problems that I've experienced. OK, so now I am about to move and I'm just going to. So with the verbal, there we go. There we go, verbal and non-verbal. 
Can you see? Look at the pictures. Those verbal, they're always shouting and screaming, eh? It's like Mr. Like me, you know? I love to talk. I love to hear my voice. Ah, uh, yeah, no, you're right. That's right. It communicates information or a message by spoken word. It's where we communicate. Those people that loves to talk like me, sorry, <laughs> right? And you just have to listen. That's it. So that's verbal. Keyword, spoken word. Nonverbal is written format. I'm just writing it there. Can you see? Now, I, I don't want to put my camera on because it's. It, I told you I look a bit like, like that man hiding the data away, which is, can you see there? That is where we're going now. See, he's just sewing it. He's just displaying it. Written format by making use of print or electronic media. All right. Well done. Well done. So let's move on to the next one. For some, we just love to ask you guys this question, right? Uh, this is where we ask you that you must design, discuss, or explain how to design a multimedia presentation. Sometimes, and I, in my 20 years, no, sorry, then I'm giving my age away, but I've started teaching at the age of 12, uh so so there we go data response designing a multimedia presentation decide on the text right so what text is it that i'm going to use keywords there the background what photos you create graphs and then you add relevant images when you look at your uh designing of a multimedia multimedia present Tyson, right? So that is what you're definitely going to do now. Now I'm going to ask that Melissa would be so kind. The next one is the non-verbal presentation. Now I'm going to ask that Melissa is going to put that because I want to see if you guys can give it to me, right? Uh, and here's the acronym for the next one. It's capital B, Melissa. It's B as we go to the chat now. We just want to see if you guys can give me the non-verbal presentation, which is it's B, then it is I, then it is the G, so it's, then it's G, then it is S, F for fever, it's F, then we have it's it's b i g s f like for fever uh melissa so after the s is going to be there we go then we have another s then it is a t then it is a d then it is an h that's it so this is my acronym and I've got it like this. So for the non-verbal presentation, I've got it like this. It's, it's, we can either say Benny or we can say, okay, I know, let me just rather give someone's name that is there from, from Voorburg, I know her. It is, um, it's Busi. Busi is, I is G going straight from school to do homework. My word, there's someone already from, from, from that already gave me what the B stands for. No, 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 it's B, it's B, I, G, S, any one of you can give me some, some of the, it's, it's, it's handouts, that's 100% right. It's handouts from Ramsey, hi, well done. Someone can give me what does the B, right? So you, this is my song. It's about Boosie that is going straight from school to do homework. So, or oh Benny, or oh Benjamin is going straight from school to do homework. So what is, we've got the H already sorted. The H is handouts, well done. Can someone give me what the B is, what the I is? Come on, it's about business, what business, what is the B, anyone there? Thank you, it's coming, anyone is, 
uh, remember this is the non-verbal presentation, so which means we don't talk, we just we just sew it. We just ah be be. I'll accept that one also for bullets, which is not bad. I'll accept that one also. But B is in fact the business reports or bullets. Or anyone from the I, we are just sew it to you. G should be a very easy one, you know, where you just display it, you just put it on there, and then people can process. That's that's also right. That is definitely right. Oh, there, Robin Vale is coming now. G for graphs. Wonderful. Um, I, I knew it. I knew it, guys. You just made my day. Wonderful. Uh, is there any one of you that can give me what is the what what the I is? I'm going to. Have I got there's the no, 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 no. Interactive whiteboards is visual aid. It's a visual aid. We're going to get to that one now. Right. Graphs we've got. Wonderful. We've got uh, banners. And come on, we've got, come on. I like that. Even if you guys just guess. Fantastic. There's more coming. Wonderful. Two more minutes. And to see if you can. There's flip charts. Indeed, 100% right. Now, flip charts would be a visual aid. Eh? Flip charts would be a visual aid. Um, uh, uh, S would be slides. No, no, no. You see, it's good that I'm doing this with you because you guys are getting confused with the visual aids and the non-verbal presentation. E is definitely right. Illustrations there. Well done. Well done. So, okay. There we have about, let me just see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Out of the nine, I think you guys got about six right. Come on, let me just take you out of this gloom and zoom. let me take you out of this. I'm going to give it to you in the PowerPoint now as we go back now to see what this is all about in terms of your visual aids, right? In terms of your nonverbal presentation. Let's quickly just go back to the nonverbal presentation. There we go. Data response. B would be your business reports. Now remember with this one, great. 12, and I'm going to ask you now, now we're going to do a practice, a few questions. This is where they ask you normally uh, examples list three or name four nonverbal um, uh, presentations, right? Or um, outline. So this is the lower order question where they can ask you outline four or three non-verbal presentations, right? So remember, B, business reports. I would be the illustrations. G would be graphs. And with the graphs, I'm sure you know there's different graphs. There's the bar graph. There is the different histogram. There is the line graph uh, and all that. So I'm sure you're all familiar familiar with that, right? Your flow chart. The S is scenarios. So we, we just, as a non-verbal presentation, right, of examples, we just give you the scenario. You need to read it. Flip charts. There's it go. Flip charts. Slide shows. Uh, tables for T and D for diagrams. H for handouts, right? Handouts. So those are the non-verbal examples of the presentations or the methods of non-verbal presentation. Right, let's move on. Looking now at your visual aids examples, there would be brochures, PowerPoints, Skype posters. Uh, the next one that I'm sure you already gave me some of it, um, I am going to ask you, and here is the next um, uh, acronym Melissa, if you can put it for us in the chat there again, is HIPOF or HIPOF, HIPOF, H I. Let's put this again up there in the in the chat there again. This is the last one. Don't worry, we 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 just going to get to this one here. In terms of the visual aids, this is always a very very important one. NB, triple NB, right? Uh, that I'm about to do now. So Melissa, if you can just put this for us also in the in the chat there again now. This is the next uh, acronym. Uh, it's, I call it the HIPOF. HIPOF, it's H.
I P P O F. So okay, so grade twelve. I'm sure you you've got that. You wrote it down. It's the heap of. Now with the visual aids, we're going to look at the different types of visual aids. As I said, it's it's heap of. It's H I double P O F. Then we also need to look at the impact of the visual aids, and this is most probably one of the most important parts also of. Uh, of uh, this particular work in terms of the presentation in the data response, right? Uh, Melissa, are you there? OK, so great to us. I am sure. Yes, sir. Uh, so can you just be so kind to write this for us for, us, for me in the chat as well, please? Uh, it's the say, it's the acronym for the visual age, which is H. H. I. S. Double P, so it's P. Yes. And another P. Yes. And then O. Yes. And then F. So I, okay. wonderful. So grade 12, okay, there we go. Um, the, uh, yes. Yes, Melissa. Okay. Great twelves. I wonder. I wonder if you guys can give me. Can you tell me what the visual aids, what the different types of visual aids are? Uh, there, I just gave you the acronym. I call it HIPOF or HIPOF, or if you just want to call it HIPO, you know that insurance guy that says you must first go to HIPO. Can you tell me what the H is, what the I is? No, man, yo. Melissa, did you, uh, ma'am, in the class, please don't give them the answer. Yeah, Vahala just gave me all the answers, just like that. You spoil my fun now, yeah, Vahala. This is the school that I must definitely come and visit, eh? Uh, I will, so I'm sure I know that, I know the teacher there, uh, but I want to come to her because she just gave you all the answers. Uh, one thing I forgot, I think the other schools, please, ma'am, come on, let's give Vahala a lekana club man, come on, club. Let's give them a hand. Don't be like that, please. Let's just clap for them. Let's just give them a round end of a. Oh, there, I see it. I see it. Uh, I nice. I see Melissa is doing it. Um, come on, where's the other? Where's Florida? Where is uh, this? Uh, why is the people in um, Atlanta so quiet then? Uh, didn't hear anything from Robin Vale, but okay, Valala, you are spot on. We're going to go now back to the PowerPoint, and this is where I'm going to finishing it off now with this now, as we're just going to do the visual aids, right? Let's look at the visual aids. So with the visual aids, um, it is, there we go, it is hip off, right? The impact. Now, grade 12s, I know you don't want to hear this, but in business studies, there is definitely not. You cannot get away with this. Um, we just love to ask you this. What is the impact of this? What is the impact of that? It's always about the impact. I think you would agree with me that it's every time about the impact. I wonder if there's a school that can tell me when we talk about the impact, what is it that we're referring to? Uh, when we ask you guys that question. Uh, Melissa, is there anyone that's got the answer there that can tell me um, when we ask them evaluate the impact of visual aids? Or evaluate the impact of this? What is it that we're looking for? Uh, anyone? There's an answer from Florida. Yes. Disadvantages and advantages. Ma'am, I'm so happy that Florida is got a spot on. And another way of putting it, anyone besides advantages or disadvantages? Could also be the positives or the negatives. Right. Now, grade 12s, we're going to look at the impact of visual aids, which means we need to look at the impact of each and every visual aid, which means it's like 
it's like what what uh, Valhalla gave us. They gave us all the answers already of the different the handouts, the interactive whiteboards, the posters and the overhead and all that. So we need to look at the positives and the negatives for each of these ones. Right. OK. So let me give you the easy advantage for most of these visual aids. Can you just all just write it down for me? It is A, A, A. No, 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 it's not Alcoholic Anonymous, eh? Please, no, 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 great 12s. No, it's not that. Write down the, the obvious, the easy advantage for most of the, of the visual aids. Whenever you get a question and they ask you, evaluate the impact of a PowerPoint or the impact of the interactive whiteboard. Your easy advantage is it is a a a. Remember that. What does it stand for? It stands for attract attention of the audience or attracting the uh, the audience attention. So that is the easy one. You see, so today is Friday. We don't want to work hard. We work smart. So for most of these visual aids, you just remember. And thank you. I, I hear some of you are saying it. Repeat it after me. That is good. Attracting the attention of the audience. So it's the A, A, A. So for most of them, right? And don't forget what I told you also. Uh, with the negatives or the disadvantages. Ma'am, I just want to see if people can remember what I've said on Tuesday. I wonder if any one of them can tell me what is the acronym, the acronym for the most of the disadvantages or the negatives. I just want to, yes, uh, to see. Not Valhalla, not Valhalla, not Flo Florida. I want to hear it from another school, please. Sorry, you're out for this round. Uh, 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 Valhalla and Flo Florida. I is there any one of you that can tell me quickly what is the what is the neg what is the um, the disadvantage or the negatives that I gave you for the um, for most of it? Any one of you, come on quickly. What is that acronym? It's like okay, I'm going to give you a hint. Is there anyone there, ma'am, that can give them? Did any one of them give the answer yet? Not yet. Not not yet, sir. Can you repeat the question? The question is. In business studies, I gave them an acronym for most of the disadvantages. Disadvantages of 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 the handout or disadvantages of someone got it here. HSP. No, 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 it's not that. For years. It's not that. Most of the disadvantages. Come on, I want to give it. I'm going to give it. I, I'm so happy that Proteus uh, from Atlantis is on board. Thank you very much. Welcome, anyone. So a disadvantage of a handout or a disadvantage of a PowerPoint. I gave you guys an easy acronym to remember that whenever you you don't know, you didn't study it, and you easy, easy, easy acronym to remember for disadvantage. Anyone? Ah, Robin Vale, Robin Vale, I'm going to make a note of you. I know your teacher very well, Robin Vale. Oh, yeah, ma'am. There we go. Did you see it there, uh, Melissa? So Robin Vale's got it hundred percent right. Um, yes, it is. It is cat. It's costly. Administration burden and time consuming. So let's quickly just go and back to the to the uh, PowerPoint and let's see if we can get it to the uh, most of the disadvantages, most of the disadvantages in terms of the visual aids. Let's look at the handout. Can you see the disadvantage of the handout? There we go. Can become expensive. So you can also say they can become very costly. So can you see there what I told you in whenever you need to write a disadvantage? It's always about the cost. It's always money, eh? Obviously, uh, you know, we don't like to spend. So a handout can be costly. Why? By the way, why? Because obviously you must pay for it for the printing. If I give you a handout, a photocopy machine, they said you need to pay for that, eh? 
and uh, it can be very a high risk of unauthorized copying. That is the administrative duty there. And uh, so that is the handout. Let's look at the interactive whiteboards. Uh, don't forget, I've left it out here, interactive whiteboards. It's the eye advantage also to attract the attention of the audience. Another advantage there is you can control it by the touch of the finger, your finger. You can draw images on the board. That is another advantage there. Look at the disadvantage again. Come on, man. Very expensive. Obviously, you're going to write it in full sentences. So you're going to say that an interactive whiteboard is very expensive to maintain or to install. Uh, it is a very costly uh, equipment cannot be connected to all computers, right? And can be faced with technical challenges. That's just especially for those older teachers, eh? Not me, those, those other older teachers, you know, that are over 50, over 60. It's quite sometimes uh, for them a challenge because, you know, it's difficult for them to control, to navigate, to maneuver those interactive whiteboards, right? So the next one is posters. There we go. There's it again. Easy advantage, eh? Hello, are you there? Hello. The first one, uh, okay, a, a capture the attention of the audience. Attention grabbing and easy to read. Right, look at the disadvantage. Disadvantage is it is time consuming, right? Can you see there? Difficult to read in crowded place. Uh, sometimes, you know, when we have posters, we want to put on uh, 10 things on that poster. Eh? Uh, let's go to the next one, PowerPoint. Look at the PowerPoint also. Advantage. Isn't that so? I hope that the hours that I've spent in compiling this PowerPoint, that you, the guys sitting the grade 12s watching this, it's not really that boring. It captures at least your attention there to a little extent. Eh? Uh, it keeps you at least a uh, while awake. Can be changed when needed, but look at the disadvantages. Can create boredom, eh? isn't it so? Uh, no electricity, uh, and therefore, if there's power outages, then I cannot, if I mean, if my laptop is not fully charged, so that is another disadvantage there. Uh, in terms of the overhead, in terms of the overhead projector, right? Let's look at this one here, the overhead projector, some of the advantages. Again, there, the AA, right? Attracting attention, some of the disadvantages. It is, it is an outdated method. But let's look at some of the other advantages of the OVED projector. It's manually, electronically, uh, and it's a useful backup tool. And uh, most of sometimes the OVED projector, I don't know, I don't even think that any one of you will remember that, but it's normally where you have the transparencies and uh, you're right on the transparency, like what they, the lady is doing there in the picture. You write the stuff on there. Yes. Any questions? Yes. We don't have those. So. Okay. So, sorry. Any questions? We don't have the spec. You don't have. They say they don't have these notes, sir. You don't have these notes. No, sir. I mean, but you have it now. Can you can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes, but I don't think they have the physical hard copy. OK, but but luckily, you know, this is what the uh, Metro North will be. They will make this available to you guys. They will definitely we will make it available. Remember, we are there for you. You on the screen, you're going to have a WhatsApp number. You are going to have a contact details. Uh, we will and I appreciate I really value that learner that uh, and, and that group that said that we don't have it. Remember, we're there for you. We will make it available. All right, don't worry, don't panic. We will definitely yes, give it to you. Huh? Since Andrews and Proteus would like you to go a little bit slower, I think they're probably copying down what's on the board. Oh. So I think they're probably writing it down in their notebooks. 
So maybe that's why they'd like you to go a bit slower. But we are, Mrs. Gordon will be sharing everything uh, along with the recording of the session. Wow. With my voice as well. Of course. Wow, you are guys listen here. I'm not cheap, eh? I normally do this for radios and they and here you're getting it for free. Come on, man. You better give yourself a hand for that. Um, so I'm just joking. So but yes, we will definitely make it available to you guys. Right? Um, I wasn't and, and thank you very much. I can I'm definitely going to go back when I do the revision. And then you can copy it down, but don't worry. Perhaps you can just also just sit and just listen and then uh, we will definitely make it available. Melissa, thank you very much for that. So allow me then just to continue um, and with the next I will definitely go a little bit slower so that you guys can take it down because it's a good exercise. Eh? I must compliment you. Good exercise also to take notes because when you go to university, this that's the order. Right, so let's look at the flip charts. Looking at the flip charts now, listen, I've got easy words once again for you, it's, but you must always write it out in full sentences here. Some of the advantages of flip charts, it's useful uh, to hand out to your uh, audience. It's, it's Flip charts would be very useful that for people that would like to visually, that would like to see it, it's easy to transport. The nice thing of a flip chart is that, ha, come on, ESCOM, you can do whatever you want. We really don't need your, uh, uh, we don't really need your electricity. So what you can do, we 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 can still do uh, flip charts, right? Isn't it so? And it can be created quickly it's easy to do it however one of the disadvantages of a flip chart uh you know if my handwriting is not okay <laughs> sorry man then uh you will not be able to make out what is on that flip chart so it's untidy handwriting equals unprofessional image uh allow me also to say this um melissa if there's anything else also from the previous ones they must just contact miss gordon um i will send him i've got a lot of info and i'm sure Mrs. gordon will also other stuff right if there's any material yes, when you go through past papers at this particular yes. point in time yes, let me also say this to you and we're going to get to it now. Uh, we're going to look at past papers. And if you do discover that in going through past papers, you don't have the notes, we just a phone call away. Eh? Right. So we're going to get to the questions, right? Um, but before we're going to get to the questions, Melissa. Yes, sir. I'm just typing in the chat that we will be sharing the PowerPoints and the recording. I just. I just want you can well, I don't need to stress about it. So then because of time and all that and of just a couple of things that I would still like to do with them that they can just uh, just sit and just relax then about about that as well. Yes. So, OK, Melissa, what I'm going to do now and great wells, I I want to show you the just give you a few tips especially on this particular topic um and even for your paper two and your paper one one of the things that i would like you to do is to make sure that you have enough past papers so what i did before we're going to even to get to our questions that we've got here early this morning i went through a couple of papers just to check out where can I find questions on this? And I want you to give me the answer. It's either you can just give me the answer. So I hope that you can see this on the screen here. So remember, we I just took you through the six and eight questions now. Those were the multiple choice questions, and it's the kind of questions where it's normally out of 30. And it's good for you to go through to work through past papers. So now we're going to look at section B question and then also section C question. So this is just to apply this now. 
Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go easy through this here and just see if you guys can at least uh, do this for me. Now, when you do a section B question, let, um, let me just give you a good tip, like with this one here now that we have in front of us here. When you see some stuff in a block, you don't read that what is in the block, like the scenario. You always read the questions first. Why? So that when you read the stuff, when you read the questions, you would then need to know what to look for, what is in that block, what is in that scenario. So, so what you're going to do, you see there it says read the scenario or sometimes read the case study. You skip the block and you go to the questions first. So here you're going to go to the questions where it says, quote, two factors that Zama considered when preparing for his presentation in the scenario above. Second question, advise Zuma on the factors that he must consider while presenting. So then what you do, and as you go through past papers, in fact, I can tell you honest, a true story. Uh, a, one of my learners of last year worked only through past papers and she obtained 78% for business studies. So please get your hands also to past papers because that is a practical way for you to see what those people up there on top men, when those people that set up the papers, so what kind, what is going on in their heads, what's going on in their minds. So please try to get hold of past papers. And this is a practical example and also all the others that I just gave you. So here it, it says, quote two factors that Zama considered when preparing for his presentation. And now here you underline when preparing when preparing so that when preparing is obviously telling you something about before right the second one is where it says advise zoom on the factors that you must consider while right so that is during so you underline and then you know what you what to look for now you're going to read through it and let me just give you about say two minutes when the second take a break i'm going to take a break for two minutes you guys see if you can just answer only those two questions for me. Melissa, is that okay? That is perfect, sir. Wonderful. So let me just see. And, and if you want to check with me, you can also put it in the in the chat and then we can see if it's right. Perhaps you can just give me. I, I hope that the system is not going to crash if they just continue to give me answers in that way because I just love it. I just love it if you give me the answers in that way. Can I give you two minutes and then you can also just give me your answers in the chat as well. So only these two for now, right? So the two factors that Zama considered when preparing for his presentation. And the second one is where you need to advise him on the factors that he must consider while presenting. Your two minutes starting now. Thank you very much, sir. Um, while the learners are working on the answers, can the teachers please, please, please complete the attendance register? By now, you should know how many learners are in your classroom. All you have to do is select the name of the school and please type in your name and the amount of learners in the classroom. The learners and teachers, please also complete the feedback form um, so that we can just get better in our next round of tutoring. Thank you very much.
Hi, Rosendahl. You'll see that the register is in the chat. It was posted at 11.24. So you can just scan the QR code or click on the link. And the same for the feedback form. You can either scan the QR code or click on the link. Right, I'm sure that, that there are many of the schools and I'm sure you already jotted your uh, answers down. So uh, let's quickly see what is what the answers are there that you guys came up with uh, for me there in terms of those two questions. So while we're getting there, I want you just please just to remember that whenever whenever we say quote whenever we say quote we are basically referring to we are referring to uh, that you must put a ticket from the case study from the scenario eh? you cannot just come up with oh there we go so wow well done thanks for that that is definitely so let's read from what florida once again said Florida, your first one is the objectives of the presentation. That is definitely right for before. So remember grade 12s, uh, it says they're in the scenario and you must quote, and that is 100% right. Uh, by quoting, you put it in inverted commas, uh, objectives of the, of the presentation and obviously the visual aids that will support. Uh, so remember what I've said, uh, you had to underline and the first one was the before and the second one was the during. Don't forget about what I've said about about your T for the time frame, uh, the duration, uh, which and then the F was obviously the, the V was the visual aids and then the F was the feedback. Uh, in the first one here, I see uh, also there you got that it's fully con conversant with the objectives and you also need to create visual aids. Can you see there? That's why I told you that uh, uh, that you must always look for those acronyms there in it there as well. So well done to those schools that's got it right. Let's see who else got it right also. Um, so Rosendahl, thank you, thank you. Yes, you guys got it right there. Eye contact, visual aids, do not speak too slowly. Use breaks when necessary. Uh, Florida, you've got it nicely right there. Information must be clear and relevant and accurate. Practice making a confident presentation, analyze any, revise the flow of the slides. Uh, and those were the kind of answers that we were definitely looking for that there as well. Um, so lastly then, what we're going to do now as we're just going to go back to the questions, great ones, we're just going to we're just going to look at uh, at how to approach how to do a, a essay question. Now this is very very important, right? As we just let's quickly just go through. Let's go through. Uh, so yes, more type of uh, section B questions and you can work through it here. So if you can just quickly just do this one for me, read the scenario below and answer the questions that follow. So can you see there again? You skip what is yeah, in the right, problem. Yeah. Right? Identify the type of visual aid that SIPO used. Motivate your answer by quoting from the scenario above. Right? Quickly, let's see if you can do that. Um, Second one is evaluate the impact of the visual aid. So can you see here? Here is that question that I was talking and referring on earlier on is you must identify the type. What type of visual aid do you guys think is SIPO, you, is SIPO make use of? What's, what is the visual aid that is using? Uh, then you must motivate that from the scenario. Let's read the scenario. SIPO, the marketing manager, explained his plans to increase sales to various stakeholders. Hard copies of the planes were distributed for future references. Very much the same one that I've asked you earlier on. What is the visual aid? It's definitely, right? Uh, yeah, you can see there the answers are coming. And then you obviously need to motivate your answer by quoting. 
your, and I will quote it, that it is the hard copies of this planes were distributed for future reference. But now, now grade 12s, before I start now with your section C question, just look at this one. I, we don't like this kind of questions. Uh, as you can see, 2.1, if you don't know the answer in 2.1, guess what now? Oh my word. Because 2.2 is a what they call a follow on or a follow up question on on 2.1 because 2.2 asks now that you must evaluate the impact of the visual aid identified in question 2.1. So if you don't know the answer of 2.1, you cannot write anything, almost anything on here. But let me just give you a good tip. Don't just leave it out, please. Great 12s, don't just leave it out. Carry on, write, write something. Remember, at the end of the year, when you write, we must read it. And you never know the mood of that marker. So, but if you don't have anything, there's nothing for us to mark. So please, I'm begging, I'm begging you guys, write as much as possible, eh? Uh, so like, like, can you remember what I told you about the, the, the visual aid, the impact of it, the positives? So you can just say the visual aid will attract the attention of the audience. And, you know, in just writing that down, you might get one mark. So um, same with the disadvantages. Say that it is quite costly to print the handouts and therefore it's going to cost the business a lot of something like that. You, you understand. So but in not writing anything, we cannot give you the mark. Uh, and then obviously there's more factors that you should consider when you respond to the questions in a professional manner. Um, I'm sure if you don't have this, we will make it available, but it's good practice questions, please. Eh? Try to try to. Uh, uh, to do at, at an essay question. Now, an essay question. This. We go write an essay. On a business presentation in which. You. You see, there was before bullets. One, two, three, four bullets. And we always start with the essay question in just, you know, in just basically introducing it, making it easier for you. So with the, with the essay, with the essay, so you can see here, it is where we ask you to, to outline the factors. Then we move it up slightly and we ask you to discuss, then to explain and then to suggest. Now, this is very important. Then. You always start your essay with the introduction, then with your body. Now, in, under your body, you must have these four headings. Four headings like factors considered uh, when preparing for a presentation. That's going to be your first heading. Your second heading is going to be uh, the impact of handouts and interactive whiteboards. That's going to be, that's your second one. Your third heading is going to be where you must explain to the presenter on how to handle feedback. Your fourth one is going to be suggest areas of improvement to the presenter. Then obviously it's going to be your conclusion. Now I must come in here grade 12 now. So most of you normally it breaks our hearts, especially those of you that 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 would then get 69% or 59% or 49%, then you've just missed your 50% or your 60% or your 70% with four marks. Can I tell you where? It's normally because you don't give any original facts. You don't give any practical examples. Um, and again, that's why I've said prepare every topic like this and all the other stuff that you study, presentation and data response. Prepare your two uh, originality, prepare your two practical examples already. Think what you're going to write if you get that essay in so that you can put it in here. Please, 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 because those are two marks that you're just deciding. Uh, 
you're not, you're not going to worry about it. So always take that into consideration. Please do that. Don't forget to um, to always put in your um, your two essays in your essays that you're always going to put uh, two facts in for originality. I've got three more minutes to go and then we are going to call it a day. It was really wonderful. Here we go. So let's look at it. So here's your introduction. So under your introduction, you write in your two sentences. I gave it to you. We will make it available to you. We're going to give it to you, right? Um, and then um, you're going to, there we go. So there's the introduction. There's your first bullet. Factors to consider when preparing a presentation. Your uh, third bullet, the impact of the handouts, impact of interactive whiteboards, feedback on a non-aggressive way, and then areas for improvement. And then obviously, uh, don't forget about your conclusion as well. So grade 12s, so please practice this. I am at a school where I would normally get about say 20 code sevens minimum. And this is what we obviously emphasize on work out as many essays as possible because if they don't ask it in an section C, I can tell you that it will be there in section B. So what I'm saying is that prepare your essays well in advance. 